everybody, welcome back. Our favorite topics, we got the Raptors jersey out there, the plushies. Let's talk about the Raptors. Combo guards, talk about the Raptors. What do you guys see in them? Should we be, should we be concerned about the playoffs coming up? I mean, when it comes to the Raptors, if you, I don't think you're a true fan if you don't have anxiety come playoff time when it comes mm-hmm. to this team. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they've shown year after year that we have reason to worry. Um, but this year with a guy like Kawhi Leonard, um, I'm really hoping that they get over the hump and we can at least try to get to the finals. Mm-hmm. Um, it's going to be tough because the top four in the East uh, seems to be really good, really talented with deep rosters, really talented players. Um, so I, my hope is that they get to the finals because ultimately if they do, that lends them in good favor of keeping a guy like Kawhi Leonard. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think if for this team to have continued success, we need a superstar. And mm-hmm. Kawhi Leonard is that guy. Mm-hmm. I'm a little worried, but if you're the Raptors, you're looking at Boston. Boston fans probably worry about their team. You look at the Sixers, the Sixers fans probably worry about their team. Every team besides the Bucks, every fan base besides the Bucks is probably worried about their team. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then you have a guy like Kawhi Leonard, a lead player like him that can bring you to the promised land. It makes you feel a little bit better. No disrespect to DeMar DeRozan, but yeah. he's nowhere near the type of player Kawhi Leonard is. And then you get a guy like Marcus Saul, great IQ, great big man. And the Pascal Siakam is looking like the most improved player who's probably like the X factor going into the playoffs. If these guys can perform well with the, the, with the bench guys that they have, I mean, the Raptors can definitely make some noise. But like yeah. Troy was saying, if you're a Raptors fan, you're following this team, you can't help but cause a, a pause and be like, well, yeah. I shouldn't jump on too quickly because I've seen this movie before and mm-hmm. I don't like the ending. <laughs> you mentioned about an X Factor, Mark. Let's talk yeah. about, you said Pascal Siakam. Who are X Factors you think in the Raptors? I'd, I should agree with that. I think Pascal is mm-hmm. the most um, important player they need to have in the playoffs just because of the fact that he's so versatile and, and you can get so many things from him, whether it's his uh, hustle, his energy play, right. or uh, the fact that he shoots so well in the field that he barely misses shots and, and that he can shoot at times. When he's hitting his shots, he's so dangerous. And the fact that he can switch on multiple pick and rolls, he's, he's I think, the most mobile big man they have in terms of right. not just defending the rim, but also switching on those pick and roll guards. Uh, and he can keep up with them better than, I think, Ibaka and Gasol. So he will be the factor on both ends of the floor for them. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I agree. Like, Pascal, I think he's awesome. I look at him as a really enhanced role player. Like, mm-hmm. he does all the little things that lead to winning, but he can also explode at the same time and give you, like, a 30-point game, right? Mm-hmm. Um, he's going to be tested in the playoffs. I think a lot of teams are really going to want him to shoot that three. Mm-hmm. And he's shown that he's been a really good corner three sh- uh, shooter, so mm-hmm. I'm hoping that pays dividends. Um, I'm also looking at a guy like Fred Van Vliet. Mm-hmm. He hasn't, uh, he's been injured, obviously, the past, like, five, six weeks. Um, and with their bench unit being somewhat inconsistent, I'm looking at Freddie to stabilize it. Mm-hmm. He has that presence, that poise, um, that can just sort of bring everybody together, put everybody in the right spots. Uh, pairing him with a guy like Jeremy Lin on the bench, I think, will help Jeremy Lin's game. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm hoping that when Fred comes back, he, he kind of restores the bench unit a bit and gets them to be a bit more consistent. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And um, actually, what I kind of like with the Raptors coming in this uh, postseason is, um, you know, we all have the anxiety of how, if they're going to choke again <laughs> coming into playoffs time. Right. But what I like is that they have a couple of two players that are, they're bringing in who have playoff experience, but a positive playoff experience. Right. Uh, you know, with Kyle he's, and and, and um, the rest of the team, they have playoff experience, but it's kind of a bad one because of LeBron. When right. they've kind of done, but you come, you bring in Kawhi, Danny Green, Marcus. All these are players who have playoff experience, but they've experienced winning and you know ch- championship. So these are kind of players that can kind of give them. Uh, some sort of matter of motivation and say, hey, I know you guys have struggled back in the playoffs. I know there is some stuff where you guys, you know, have been called a disappointment because of how you guys played against LeBron. Right. But here's two, three players like Gasol, um, Danny Green and Kawhi who says, we've beaten LeBron James in the finals. We've gotten there. We know how we can get it done. And then Gasol will be coming in with that leadership as well and that veteran kind of presses in during the playoffs. So right. I think that's going to help him a lot too. So that Kyle Lowry doesn't have to have that burden of having to be the one how to lead and during the playoffs because we know that he has struggled during the playoffs so it's good to bring that kind of experience and that kind of mentality coming in what kind of matchups in playoffs are we scared of in terms of like our our road to the promised land Hmm. bucks in the eastern conference finals only that's the only team that worries me i think Mm -hmm. the raptors would be all right boston kind of worries me a little bit but the bucks length Giannis. Um, picking up Pau Gasol, I think that's an underrated yeah. uh, pickup. And Miritich, because, that's Right, Miritich on oh the court uh, would be great. But I think Pau Gasol, just 
that gives them that veteran leadership that they didn't have the past two years. Mm -hmm. um, so now he can kind of stabilize that team and, and calm them down. But their length is scary. Giannis is scary. And the Raptors, I mean, they, they had their way with the Raptors during this playoffs, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, during the regular season. So the Bucks mainly. Boston be second. I'm not worried about Philly at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I echo Adrian, you know, because especially when it comes to the Bucks and Boston, um, the Raptors have no ab no answer absolutely for Kyrie Irving, mm -hmm. and they have no answer for Giannis. Um, what's that? Jeremy Lin. Jeremy Lin. <laughs> <laughs> he did a good job. He did a good job against them. Yeah, he did a good job. The Bam Feet are a really good pass. Sure. Like, mm -hmm. um, but I mean, we've also seen games where. Ky Kyrie, uh, Kyrie Irving's dropped yeah. 40 and he had a He's career in the playoffs. I like a career from, yeah. assist for Kyrie Irving like that's yeah. that's a little different right yeah. so mm -hmm. um, those two scare me and again especially with the Bucks like their versatility is insane they can go big they can go small uh, they have shooting all around the court Brooke Lopez is hitting right crazy ass their, shots like, how do uh, you their point differential all season has been above double digits which makes pretty much puts them in the pantheon of one of the greatest teams all time yeah. statistically yeah. Um, so I'm 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 really nervous about that matchup. Ultimately, though, I really think the Raptors could beat them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I really do. What do they need to do? Because like they had, the, like, I mean, the Bucks had their way on the Raptors. Every right. game that they played, like the Bucks just literally, even right. though they were, uh, the Raps played well, like the Bucks still right. kind of uh, had their way on it. Like, what, well, can, what can I we think, do? Like, I think with the Raps is they have to hit their threes. Yeah. Um, the Bucks. For as great as they are, one mm -hmm. thing that they don't do so well is cover the three-point line. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So they have to, and the Raptors also have to play their game and get out in transition. They're one of the best transition teams in the NBA. Mm -hmm. So if they're doing those two things, getting it out in transition and hitting their threes, um, defensively, I think they have the tools to make Giannis work, mm -hmm. um, but then also stifle some of their role players. So mm -hmm. those are, that's kind of the formula I'm hoping for yeah. the Raptors to get to beat the Bucks, and we'll see if it happens. Yeah. And yourself, any thoughts about? I guess the Bucks. Bucks. I agree. You gotta you gotta hit them where it hurts in the three point line because yeah. they do clog the paint a lot. Mm -hmm. um, they don't guard the three that well. But the Raptors don't shoot the three that well. Right. So yeah. that's kind of where the Raptors kind of take a, a step back. But with with Giannis, when when he stretch out the floor and have him controlling the whole paint, it's kind of what LeBron did in Miami, mm -hmm. where he kind of took control of the post and they had all the shooters around him, and that's exactly what the Bucks are doing now. Mm -hmm. And I just don't think the Raptors have the guys that can really keep up. Like, Brooke Lopez shooting these threes, you put Pau Gasol, uh, Marcus Gasol out there. Yeah. He's not quick enough to deal with a perimeter, with a perimeter player, especially yeah. on a pick and roll if he gets stuck out there on the island. And then Serge Ibaka, you don't know if he's going to punch a guy and he's going to be gone. Right? Like, you, don't know, you don't know what these guys are going to do. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. with the Bucks, like, as much as I want to try to find something that could give the Raptors hope, it's hard. Like the, to me, the Bucks just have to have an off game mm -hmm. yeah. because there's nothing really could do to slow down Giannis. Like he's been yeah. a freak. They've been consistent all year. Number one in net rating. Number one in defensive rating. Top five in offensive rating. I mean, the Bucks look like the clear cut favorites of the East. Mm -hmm. yeah. Way to, add, way to end on a kind of a depressing <laughs> note. But hey, we're Raptors fans and we're support no matter what. Right. This is what we'll we're talking about. Exactly. We're objective on our yeah, podcast. We'll like, we're from Toronto. We want to root for these guys, but at the same time, we're going to call it how we see it, right? Yeah. So. Thank I mean, you guys for joining us. Combo <laughs> no guys, problem. exactly. Real talk. And that's what we're here for. Anyone you'd like to shout out, you can look at that camera and oh, just say what you want. For sure. Shout out to all the listeners and everyone who's been there from day one just supporting the pod. Also, shout out Mega City Basketball, our guy Jesse Aceto, Mega City CEO, uh, just for, again, giving us that platform. Um, and yeah, just keep tuning in every week. Uh, we drop once a week, usually Thursday or Friday. Um, and yeah, yeah and cut. just keep it going. Subscribe on iTunes, yeah. subscribe on SoundCloud. Yeah. Just keep supporting. We thank you all for everything you guys have done for us so far. Keep rocking with us because we're going to get bigger and bigger. So enjoy the ride. There you go. Marky <laughs> Mark, any last thoughts? Uh, just thank you for our fans too. You guys can always find us on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, Appy Not Crossover. Keep commenting, keep liking, keep sharing us our posts. One of you know, one of our posts was one of our uh, guests here, Jr. With some really cool moves, dropping one of his uh, students that he coaches. It's so. abuse. You're not supposed to <laughs> drop your fellow campers. You know what I'm trying to say. But hey, thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for commenting. And hey, stay balling. <laughs>